Christmas night edition of Hillbilly DVD Reviews. The fucking stockings have been ripped open, the candy's been poured out, the presents have been long been unwrapped, the Christmas turkey dinners have been eaten. This is Christmas night. Hillbilly DVD Review is the only YouTube channel who's going to shoot a review on Christmas night, edit it on Christmas night, upload it all in the spirit of Christmas. I've been waiting to do this review tonight, and it's a really good movie. We got the Blu-ray review of Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence is a 1983 film from a Japanese director, Nagisha Oshima, I believe that's his name, and it stars David Bowie, Bill Conti, Ryukichi, I'm sorry, Ryukichi, shit man, Ryukichi Sakamoto, and Takeshi Kitano, that's right, beat Takeshi Kitano, the guy who makes all the, the Japanese gangster movies and shit, you know, directs some stars and shit, he's in this movie. This movie is really an exceptional film. I've had the Criterion Blu uh, Blu-ray for a while. I got it for like I think a Christmas gift last year, and uh, I've been waiting. To, like, I waited all the way in, in, to watch it this year, and I'm glad I fucking did, man. Like in a weird way, it was like one of the cornerstones that really made this Christmas a great, memorable Christmas, man. Sitting down watching this film. Now you might be thinking this might not be like really a good Christmas film because it's set in a World War II era. Uh, Japanese prisons camp where they're holding uh, mostly British uh, soldiers captive, but some other like countries and shit. There's a few guys sprinkled in and shit. But basically, what it is is uh, it's pretty fucking brutal, man. Some guys get caught in the beginning from uh, doing some gay sex, and the Japanese this is very dishonorable to them. It's all about their culture, man. So, so they 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 make they make one like one of them was actually an Asian guy. I can't remember from what country from. I don't think he was Japanese, but he was he was what they call buggering this. Uh, this Dutch soldier. So they humiliate this guy, man. The movie starts out. They're beating him. They throw him a knife. Like, cut your guts out, motherfucker. Do it the honorable way. Like, he tries to stab himself and shit. He can't even do it. So later on, they, they chop his head off and shit. There's some very brutal shit going on. But this is really about the humanity. And the thing that's interesting about this movie, it gives this movie a whole interesting spark. It was by a Japanese director. And he's showing, you know, the Japanese being the captors and the, being the, you know, the brutal ones and stuff. But it's really, it's not like one note. It's like, yeah, these motherfuckers have the upper hand. But it's all about the fact that from the Japanese mind point, they would never surrender. They would never fucking, you know, be allowed to be taken captive and shit. They would kill themselves. So they're really looking at these British motherfuckers. They got that captive. Like, they don't understand. And, like, and like there's a few guards that are a little rough or whatever. But the main guy, played by uh, uh, Ryukichi uh, Sakamoto and Takeshi Katano, is kind of like the main guard. Like, they're, they're kind of getting buddy-buddy. They want to be humane. Because the thing about this movie is it really goes into the background of these characters and how war put them in this position. These are not, by nature, brutal people. These are not, you know, like, by nature, people who want to be this. Just war broke out, man, World War II, and you got drafted, and you got thrown into it, and here you are, and now here you are watching over some prisoners and shit. But the Japanese, they have a very strict code of honor, and the thing is, is, like, whenever, like, the prisoners get out of line, like, there's some shit going on, they don't know who's doing it, they just pick a motherfucker out, and they're like, okay, we're going to execute you. And the, and the whole thing is like, well, I didn't do it. Like, I'm not the one who did it. Sakamoto's just like, She's like, I don't care. You're going to die for my honor. You know, if I just let everybody get away with this shit, like, I'm going to look like a fool. I'm going to look stupid. So, like, it really is not about a brutal mind aspect. It's about, you know, really the tradition of their culture clashing. And you get Takeshi Kitano. He's good friends with uh, Mr. Lawrence, played by Bill Conti. And they kind of go back and forth. And Mr. Lawrence is kind of the one who negotiates, you know, please don't go too hard on this guy. Help this guy out. He's sick. Like, whatever. Basically, you have David Bowie come in as Jack Selliers, and he's just like really the one who's like standing up to these motherfuckers, pushing them, pushing their boundaries. And we get to know his backstory. They actually do flashbacks into his childhood, his sense of uh, of just uh, dread and regret of something like he let his younger brother like 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 get into a bad situation, didn't stuck up with him and shit. So like ever since then, he, like he just felt disgraced that he let something bad happen to his younger brother. So he David Bowie's character before the war, he was a lawyer, he was doing good, but inside he just felt shitty, man. He felt shitty because he wasn't a good brother to his brother. So when the war broke out, he said fuck it, he volunteered. So he just really is a crazy character. He does a lot of crazy shit just to throw off the guards, fuck with the Japanese guards and stuff. So like him coming to the camp is really pushing this shit to a whole new level. It's like you got the Japanese guards, they don't want to kill people, they don't want to discipline them, but they have to to maintain control and then you got this guy's pushing it. It's hard to explain but like when you watch the movie you do get the feeling that it is two different cultures here. It's not just like oh these are the characters, this guy's talking to that guy. Like you see the staunch 
viewpoints and the opposites, but you also see what brings them together as people. And you also see that majority of these guys are not born soldiers. They would never been soldier if the war broke out. So I'm not going to spoil what the title Merry Christmas Lister Lawrence means, but it comes at the most pivotal point in the film of just the Japanese uh, showing their humanity, uh, Takeshi Kitano in general. He defies like some logic, some orders in order to do something. Uh, it's basically a, a kindness, an act, a gesture. You know what I mean? That, that that is remembered years later. Later on, they flash back. Well, they flash forward actually to the after the war, and we we catch up. You know, what's really amazing about this film is uh, you know you might oh go I don't want to watch no war two prison camp shit dry shit no nah, man like the way it's shot is beautifully shot. It's artistically shot. They actually physically built a real prison camp, and then they shot it. It's no fake looking shit whatsoever. And also the music, which was also composed by the guy who plays the, the guy uh, taking care of the Japanese camp, uh, Ryuchi Sakamoto, he does a score. The score is an awesome 1983 synthesizer score. It's really strong, it's really powerful, and it gives this movie, uh, in a weird way, you know, putting music in that, you know, is not, you know, whatever, fitting with the time. It actually gives the movie a timeless feel because you're not looking at this like, oh, so this is some stodgy old World War II shit. It's like, no, this is a beautiful artistic film that just happens to be set in World War II and gives it its own identity along with the great visuals. I give the director all the credit in the world. This is a movie that really hit me in an emotional way, and I think it probably will if you watch it too. But uh, Merry Christmas to Lisa Lawrence just being really shockingly original for the type of genre it is and being so well done as a movie. I got to give it 8 out of 10. All right, picture and sound is being the Criterion Collection. You know they don't fuck around. You know I can read the back how they did the whole like fucking clean up with the dirt way and shit. Like they do all that stuff with the computers. They take all the dirt and shit out. This movie has a very natural appearance. When you first put it put it in, it's not going to pop off the screen. The colors are very muted. They're shot very realistically with real light. The prison camp is. But when you start noticing, you start really noticing how beautifully the shots are set up. Like one thing I noticed, I was like, okay, this is an older movie. It ain't going to pop off the screen. But it's hard to explain, but this movie with the camera moves and the way they stack things in the foreground and background, it has a real 3D depth to it. I was fucking around. I watched about 20 minutes of the movie in 3D on my TV. I converted my TV, put the 3D glasses on. I was like, this actually kind of works as a 3D movie. Very bizarre, but it's true. But that shows the artistry and the way they shot it, set up the shots and knew what they was doing and shit. The soundtrack... Sounds really good. Like I said, the score is amazing. Synthesizer score sounds great. But it's only a 2.0 stereo, you know, criterion. They don't do remixes and shit. They leave it how the theatrical, you know, release score you know, or, or soundtrack was. Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, just being beautiful, natural looking, good sounding. Picture and sound, I'm going to give it 7.5 out of 10. All right, extra features. They got a bunch of extra features, man. I want to read them off. Uh, <clears throat> they got the Oshima Gang. It's the original 1983 making of featurette, kind of like the press release, the EPK and shit. They showed the world tour, actually, that the actors went around on uh, promoting the film at Cannes and shit. It was a big hit at Cannes. Now they have, they have new video interviews with the producer Jeremy Thomas, the screenwriter, actor Tom Conti, who played Mr. Lawrence, and actor and composer Ryuchi Sakamoto. I watched, I watched these uh, last night. They're good. Uh, especially after you watch the movie, you want to know more, and you can see what these guys look like now, because this was, uh, shit, man, it's 30 years ago this came out. You got Hasten Slowly. Now, what this is is an hour-long 96 documentary by author Lawrence uh, Vanderpost, whose autobiographical, uh, uh, autobiographical uh, novel was the basis of the film. Basically, this guy, <clears throat> this movie is loosely based on two of his... Uh, books and like what's really interesting when you sit down and you watch this guy's story and this man tells his life basically he was he he was like in a dead situation <laughs> like he got caught he was doing some guerrilla warfare he was sneaking around he was trying to do some shit against the japanese in the war they caught him surrounded by a battalion the only reason this man lived and he's the basis for the mr lawrence character the only reason this man lived was he threw his gun down threw his arms up and he starts speaking in Japanese, which he had actually learned way beyond, like before the war, but it really never had much of a use of it. He asked him, I forget exactly how to phrase it, but he like really asked him nicely, like, please don't kill me if you would be so kind and all this shit. And the Jap Japanese soldiers, they were ready to kill him. They were shocked, so they took him. He became a prisoner and shit. So, like, so like that's when you, I mean, granted, this is a movie adaptation of his book, but like I said, like, that's why this movie's so emotional and shows like the real humanity of both sides of the British, of the Japanese, and it could really apply to any war. Just the fact these are human beings in these horrible, bloody, violent situations, shit. So you know the real shit is inspiring this movie. And it also got the original theatrical trailer. 
And also, new and improved English subtitle translation. Um, <clears throat> I guess it was a problem on earlier DVDs or maybe VHSs when it was originally released that you know some of the words weren't translated, but just by correctly. But just being in Criterion, man, they're going to do it up right. And what's also awesome is we get the Merry Christmas or Mr. Lawrence book. It's a real book, like Lawrence of Arabia, <laughs> Lawrence of Shinjuku tells you know Mr. the real life Mr. Lawrence story. All this shit, man, just a great fucking book. Is just going into the humanity of you know this war and the situation. So special features, like I said, this is a movie based on the real shit. They got the real people telling it, and they also got the filmmakers. You know, a lot of footage with them, interviews or not. Great special features, man. Criterion Collection knocking it out of the fucking park. Special features, ten out of ten. So that's it for Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. Um, this movie, I didn't really. You know, it was really hard for me to do a review on it because it just touched me so much emotionally. It made me feel so much. And honestly, like, I couldn't really tell you about it without giving it away. I really think you should experience it for yourself. But, you know, this setting and these characters, man, it really hit me. And this really is about the true meaning of Christmas. Like, like 95% of it ain't a Christmas film, but the, the one part of the movie that takes place on Christmas night, it really will, you know put the Christmas spirit into and I gotta say man like I, I was fucking in a cranky ass mood a lot of people know a lot of people talk to me like like I was like fuck Christmas man like fucking couldn't get a vacation from work and all this shit and this movie man just made me well, realize really what Christmas is about or you know you apply to any holiday you know Kwanzaa Hanukkah whatever but uh but yeah it's fucking great man thank you so much and I hope you guys all had terrific holiday season shit and you know we still got new year's up and everything coming on so enjoy that as well so thank you so much guys again this will probably be our last video for the year so again thank you so much for all the support and the watching shit have a great night and thank you so much merry christmas mr lawrence